going to be talking about the basics of knowledge exchange, I guess. So can you tell me a bit about what you see knowledge ex exchange is about? Because you've said or written somewhere that it's about a collaboration of researchers and knowledge users. Could you elaborate a bit more? Sure. So in, in Canada, we've had a lot of focus on knowledge exchange and knowledge translation is often the term that's used more commonly in Canada. In the UK it would be implementation. So part of the challenge is these different terms and are we talking about the same things or not. But I would argue that knowledge exchange and integrated knowledge translation are about collaboration. It's about researchers working with collaborating, engaging knowledge users who could be clinicians or managers in the health system or policy makers or members of the public, it could be industry, um, it could be virtually anybody who could make use of research. And so the notion is if you want research to be applied, you need to make sure that it's relevant and the chances of that happening are much greater if researchers are actually working with knowledge users and identifying the problems and issues that they have and then focusing their research on answering those questions. So for a new or early career researcher who wants to make sure that his or her research will change the world, what would be some basic or, or key um, points that they need to be aware of if they uh, want to move into doing more with knowledge exchange? Yeah, so the philosophy behind knowledge exchange would be actually engaging the knowledge users at the beginning, right. making sure that you've got the right or you're focusing on the right questions, and that doesn't mean that curiosity-driven research isn't still important, but in terms of potentially accelerating the impact of research, it's a good place to start by asking the knowledge users, well, what are their issues? What do they want research done on? What information needs do they have so that the research that you do can actually be tailored? Because what we know is in those situations, and if you actually partner during the research with those knowledge users and there are different funding opportunities in Canada and in Australia partnership grants that encourage that to happen it means that the knowledge user actually better understands the research and why it was done in the way it was done and then is more confident in the findings when they actually become available which means since they were the ones who said this is what our issues are that we need research on mm -hmm. when they get the answer they're much more likely to apply it Right. And it also means, and so there's always this notion of, but you can't engage every knowledge user in every research project. So you need to do the knowledge exchange piece with some knowledge users. But then when you have the findings, you still need to do the dissemination or end of project um, knowledge translation because other policy makers or decision makers could still benefit. So you still need to do the more traditional things, but it might not be publishing. If you're wanting to get uh, officials in the bureaucracy, they need short half-page uh, descriptions of things delivered by credible uh, people or people that are perceived to be credible by them. And so a publication isn't going to do that for you. So actually right. thinking about what are the needs of those end users in actually receiving information and making sure that it's tailored to them and that the medium that you use to get the information to them actually fits with mm. what they're expecting. So knowledge users can be challenging and, and what also makes it um, interesting is you might have clinicians and you may have the managers or policy makers who are very different in what they need and how you may need to interact with them. So some of the things that I think we need to be thinking about is making sure that those decision makers actually have um, skills in being able to use and critically appraise research because they may not have received that in their training. Mm -hmm. So it's, the, it's a problem if they don't know the value of research or how to discriminate good quality from lesser quality research. So they need those skills to begin with. So what sort of opportunities would you be looking at where you can, where people, researchers and knowledge users come together? Is well, I th so it depends on the setting. But I, th I think reasonable advice would be to create situations mm -hmm. where we bring researchers and knowledge users together. 
And that may be in formal settings like committees, mm -hmm. but it may be in informal ways as well. Because I think the literature is starting to be clearer about that. It, it actually doesn't necessarily need to be a formal setting where researchers and knowledge users come together. Mm -hmm. um, if they can do it in social settings, then that works as well. Mm -hmm. One of the things that amazed me was there's a lot of interest with young researchers. Oh, good. And I think part of it relates to this really strong desire to have an impact. Mm -hmm. And they get really excited by the opportunity to work with policymakers because they can see how what they do can be translated quite quickly mm. into practice and into policy. And so they're very keen. And but they often then told me about you know, how maybe their supervisors were less enthusiastic because, you know, it takes a long time to develop these relationships and maybe you're not going to be able to write as many papers mm -hmm. as if you had just, you know, put in a grant and done it all on your own. Mm. So this obviously, um, this paradigm shift requires system changes, but um, how, would, how would you overcome some of the challenges, particularly the researchers? I mean, often a researcher isn't a very good communicator because they're more interested in doing their research. So how, how do they, those people develop the skills? And equally with the, the knowledge users, how do they develop those skills of engagement? So with researchers, I think we need to really look carefully at, at um, postgraduate training programs. Mm -hmm. um, the world has changed from what it was 20, 30 years ago, where most of the people who were getting higher or advanced degrees were actually becoming academics. I think now in Canada, it's maybe 50% actually stay in the academy and the others go to industry, into government, into research institutes. And so the, the traditional model of training and the focus on peer-reviewed publications and grants may not work really well for a lot of the people that were actually mm. training. Because some of them actually become the knowledge users, don't they? Well, they, they do. They go into they, industry. And that's right. And so th they switch sides, as it were. <laughs> Or they can do, which is a huge asset it is. because they understand all of the research issues. Yeah. So as they bring that to the new position on the other side of the table, they're way further ahead. And they have a comfort level with research and researchers where people who may have never had much interaction mm. um, with the research community would take longer to come up to speed and, and may need capacity building in terms of understanding um, you know, study designs and critical appraisal mm. and how you might be able to incorporate research into the decision-making process. So I, I think another approach is sort of the incremental small wins. Mm -hmm. And um, if, if the academy and research organizations and knowledge user organizations actually start in little ways to try to do this, and if funding agencies can actually think about providing grants to support integrated knowledge translation or knowledge exchange research that's actually bringing researchers and knowledge users together, then I think the experience in Canada is once that starts to happen and people start to see you can, as a researcher, work really productively, and that's not to say, as with any kind of relationship, sometimes it doesn't work out. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's not a panacea, but the data from CIHR's evaluation is that for the most part it actually does work out quite well. Researchers um, find that how they approach research actually changes when they start doing research in this way. Mm -hmm. The knowledge users also say that how they think about research and using research in their business begins to change. Mm 